<coughs> I am here for, to talk about Alto One, a nano satellite using open source software, labor software. And well, let's be a bit. The pointer is. Sorry. Okay, the pointer is only for the laser. So from where I come and what I am doing. I come from Finland, I am not Finnish, for that reason I don't have a yellow hair, okay? But more or less I come from the Alto University. Alto University is the product of the merge of three universities in Finland, Helsinki School of Economics, Helsinki School of Art of Design, and the formerly Helsinki University of Technology. With this new merge, we got a new task. The task is to build the first Finnish satellite, okay? It's going to be a small satellite, but the university got the task. We have some kind of consortium with a lot of companies involved, but mostly it's built by the students through bachelor thesis, master thesis, etc. Currently in our project we have like 30 students involved from different levels, bachelor, master, PhD, and of course the payloads that for people that is not familiar with the concept of payloads in, sat in the satellites is like the important things in the satellite are built by external companies, laboratories, etc. So, this is Alto One, or this is how it should look in one year, okay? Right now we are in the preliminary design. We are the, taking all of these decisions about what it should do and in which way, okay? And we know all this that is going to have this appearance because we are following some global standards to do this satellite. I will talk in the next slide about this. But briefly, some points about the Alto One project, okay? Of course, if we are building this, it's not because, well, too much hair for the microphone. Uh, it's not for, uh, for fun only. We are building this because we have extensive objectives and also university objectives. We try to educate better engineers. We try to promote the science technology and the science uh, knowledge in Finland. And we have a really nice goal that is launch the first Finnish satellite that always is some kind of incentive, really nice incentive and more or less is trying to promote the research in this field in a country as Finland, okay? The standards that we are using in the satellite are based in the QSAT design specification. Maybe some of you is familiar with this specification. This specific specification comes from Stanford and California Polytechnic Institute, and more or less they are telling us, or when I say telling us, telling to everyone that is interested in a small satellite, how it should look, what is the maximum, weight, which is the dimensions, etc. In our case, I guess that is the maximum uh, dimensions. It's a 3U type. It means that it's going to be less than 4 kilograms, okay? And at the same time, we are trying to follow the FEC standards. It's some kind of uh, pure European standards for everything concerning a satellite. It's some kind of insane stuff that I guess that nobody's following completely, but they are giving us a lot of nice information. We will use a, a open source, well, open source, sorry, open amateur radio frequency, okay? It means that anyone that's have a radio in their home that can synchronize with this frequency could fetch the data from the satellite, as you can do right now with other satellites. And, well, we are testing all of, according with the standard space, and etc. So, this is a preliminary schema about how it's going to be internally Alto One, okay? And we can see here, well, we can have the ra radio subsystem communication, we have here the spectrometer, we have the S-band antenna, we have the batteries, but this is not how say this is not telling you nothing about the satellite. More or less, I'm going to talk briefly about the payloads. We are going to send three payloads, okay, three important things that are uh, electroplasma break, that is going to try to prove new mechanisms for the tether in the satellites. We are going to put a spectrometer that is going to send, is going to be also in a mission in Mercury in 2014. And we are going to put, no, we are going to put a radiation monitor, and the radiation monitor is going to be in this mission. And we are going to take all of this extensive data from them, and we are going to send to the Earth, and we are going to put there for you, okay? And for people that is interested in this kind of data. And, well, in this satellite is going to be a mainboard computer, or also call it OBC, onboard computer. Is the computer in charge of taking care about the things, the data and process to send to the Earth, whatever. And I'm going to talk here about the software that we are going to use there. A brief, some, some small notes about what is going to be there and why. A small introduction about nanosatellite. Well, a nanosatellite, the, the name is telling you that it's small, okay? It's an embedded system. In this case, it's going to be more or less these dimensions, okay? 
It's a delicate artifact. I guess that it's obvious that we can go there and reboot it. It's something that is tricky right now. And it's using real-time data. Due to the payloads are, well, fetching the data in real time and it's, it's more or less <coughs> the point of this mission, try to get the data. And, well, we don't have too much power because it's a small satellite, so the, the solar cells are going to be small. So everything is going to be very limited, so it's really complex. And it's really difficult to test because the space, if you don't know, but I guess that you know, but it is a joke, is different than the Earth, okay? We have vibration, we have radiation, etc. And, well, the components that we are using in the Earth are not ready for this kind of uh, environment, so it's a bit tricky to test. And normally it's expensive, really expensive, but this is our university and we don't care. We try to do it in a cheaper way and the best way and try our best. This is a general scheme about the system design, okay? Here you can see the ground segment. This is the segment that is going to be in the university. It's going to be the ground station, okay? And this is the satellite segment. We have here different subsystems, and this is the part that my team and me, we are in charge of design and implement, okay? The onboard computer. The onboard computer is going to take care about this spectrometer data, radiation monitor, and electroplasma break that, well, is going to be also manipulating it. At the same time, it's going to be in charge of the communication subsystem, the altitude determination and control system, etc. Here is more or less uh, the interface control, some kind of draft, okay? How is going to be the information flowing around the system? We're going to use the I2C protocol, or I2C subsystem, and we're going to fetch the data from here, and we're going to process in the onboard computer. But here it comes. We are in an open source Libre Software conference, and we are going to talk about software. We need something simple and extensible. It's, it's just obvious, okay? A satellite is something complex. We can put windows there. Well, so we need also something reliable. We can put windows in there. Tiny but functional. I guess that we can put so custom also because uh, our payloads is something we can consider that all the satellites are some kind of unique uh, machines. Why? Because well, all of them they have a specific mission. So we will need some specific software, homemade of course, according with the specifications of our payloads. And it should be thought to be working in the worst scenario because in the space everything can happen. It should be full tested, and of course, we should be and we, we should uh, release everything. And this is something that I would like to remark. Right now, we have a really well many, many, many satellites in the space, and I will say that we don't know how work any of them. We don't know what is happening there because we have all of these governmental agencies that well they try to be transparent and they well they are getting something, but. We don't know what is happening, and I guess that if we are trusting the satellites, if we are trusting in the data, we should know also how the data is manipulated. I mean, we are a software guys, more of us, and we know that a, a small integer can modify a huge variable. So, I guess that is something that we can or we like to introduce in Alto One that you should have the capability to check the software that is running there in your computer. Okay, this is how they are getting the radiation data. This is how they are getting the spectrometer data. This is our objective. Okay. So how we are going to do this? This is maybe something crazy for people that is in, in the same industry of the space technology. We are going to bet for the Linux kernel, applying real-time patches. A satellite should behave as real-time system for different questions that is out of the scope. The operating system is going to be a custom distribution. We are going to use something that you probably know. The payload software is going to be homemade. We don't know the language yet, but we will bet for C, C++, or Assembler. The ground station is going to use Geni Radio and Jepredit. Jepredit is, a, is an application for tracking satellites. And the data distribution is going to be about using public website or Genso. Genso is a, is a project that is trying to coordinate all the ground stations around the world and try to interconnect them and then providing the data for everyone that is connected. It's some kind of, well, when you are tracking a satellite, the satellite is only visible for a couple of minutes. So if you don't have a ground station in every country or in every different latitude, it's going to be really difficult to follow your satellite 24 hours. But with this kind of network, we will have the capability to say, for instance, to Brazil, hey, Brazil, well, can you take a look about my satellite? Can you send these comments? It's something like that, the general idea. Well, the kernel is going to be highly customized. It's going to be really tiny. We don't know yet. As I said, we are in the preliminary design phase. It's going to be focused for I2C, and it's going to be also really focused in process scheduling, different priorities, as other operating systems in real time, maybe for 300 to zero in terms of levels. It's going to use the real time patches. Right now, the idea is to use Open Embedded Test Basement for the distro, 
Because maybe some, someone comes here and says, why you don't create your own distro? Well, because we are doing a satellite. We have enough problems, okay? So we don't want to create our own distribution. Deterministic system. Something really important in satellites, or I guess in all the embedded systems, is that you should know the state of the system and how it's going to be if you perform an operation. And also, really important, the time that it's going to take. If I'm going to say to the satellite, please take me a photo, I should know that in one minute it's going to be a photo. And if, it, if in one minute it's not a photo there, it's because it's something is wrong, okay? It's not behaving properly. So it should be deterministic, and this is a help. Uh, autonomous, it means that if for some reason we lost the communication with it, we, don't, we, we can say to the satellite, hey, please do this, this, and this. Satellites should have the mechanism to know that, hey, I should perform these operations, I should do this, this, and this, me and while, okay? Communications, we are having in mind the bus for interprocess communication, but maybe it's out of scope also talk about this here. Fail of software, thin, simple, and reliable. Client server architecture is going to behave in that way that if the payload of software, for instance, if the spectrometer goes down, we turn off the software and that is all. This is not like some operating system that you know that you plug a printer and then everything crashes. No, we can, we can allow that. We, can, we should have the capability to say we don't need this software anymore. It's going to be designed to use in user space memory. It means really isolated from the kernel. It should have the capability to crash the system and will be GPL. Concerning the ground station, we are going to use Genio Linux, we are going to use Genio Radio and custom software that of course also we, we will put available on the net. GPREDIT for real-time satellite tracking, connect to Jensen Network, collaborating with ESA and with other satellites, and the ground station will be in the church of the data publication. And of course will be visitable. If you like a country like Finland with one meter of snow, you are welcome, please come to visit us. And finally, data distribution. How is going to be the data? Well, Normally, and something that is funny in some scientist projects is that when they fetch the data, they use in their papers and they don't put in the net. We will put a lot of effort into the data for everyone. Even if you don't have clue about what means a spectrometer, you should have the capability to have a zip file in your desktop and say to someone, hey, I have a spectrometer data. I don't know what it means, but I don't love it. Okay? This is the idea. A license probably public domain, we don't know yet. Distribution also <coughs> distribution through Genso project, maybe some API that you can check. We have one project as reference in the SSTL in the Stanford project that they are showing everything from the satellite and even they have the capability or you have the capability to send a command to the satellite and you enter in a queue and they deliver you the photo. It's really nice stuff. And of course the data distribution will be useful. So this is the idea. We are going to put a satellite there that is going to have open source, libre software running, we will publish everything there and ideas, critics, suggestions, money for the project, whatever is welcome. Thank you for your time. I have one minute according with the clock, so some questions? Yeah, please. In the UK, the universities are quite um, protected under their IP. Was that the case in Finland, or was it quite difficult to get them to convince them to allow you to just um, like make everything free? <coughs> What do you mean with making free? Like can you repeat the question? Yeah, can, 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 can. Well, writing GPL software and releasing it under those licenses rather than owning it by the university. Mm, as far as I know, we don't have any problem with that. I, I should say that Finland is quite permissive with that. So, as Sorry, far can you repeat the question? Yeah, well, the, the, the question was something that if we are going to have some problem releasing the software because we, we come from a university. I don't think so. Remember that Linux born in Finland. <laughs> So, more questions? I have 50 seconds. Yeah. Uh, will you be able to upgrade your system in some way? Or? Yeah, actually, it's not the, like upgrade, like Windows Update or Ubuntu Packet Manager, but yes, we will have the capability to reflash the system. We will have the capability to send new software as the mass rover has. I mean, right now in. Okay, uh, we will have that capability, but the problem is that I, I didn't mention that because this goes uh, really, really deep. Is that the radio bandwidth that we have is a bit, uh, it's really, really small. So we can perform some updates, but really, really small updates. Okay.